Hi, thank you very much. Um, so I'm Carl Huang, and I'm from the um, Koki, the Curtin Open Knowledge Initiative. Um, and uh, you'll see there's a link to this set of slides as well if you want to um, access the slides with this um, links provided for the various uh, things that I'm going to talk about as well, uh, which might be useful. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which Curtin Perth is located, the Wujak people of the Noongar Nation, uh, pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, and in my presentation, I'm going to start off with just a minute or two introducing what Koki is really about and linking that to um, this current piece of work um, that was recently published earlier this year. Um, and then also linking that to what the key takeaways are and what is the implications for the bigger picture. Um, so what is Koki? It's a um, strategic project at Curtin University and started in 2018. And um, it has grown to be now one of the largest uh, humanities project in WA uh, with uh, multi-million dollars of investment. Um, and these this include investment from the university itself, plus various other funders like Arcadia and the Mellon Foundation, uh, which funds various parts of our project. And what makes our project unique or quite unique is that it's an interdisciplinary project uh, and networks that combines humanities perspectives uh, with big data uh, to address critical issues. And one of our biggest projects that we've been working on is building the Koki data infrastructure, which draws in data from publicly available data whenever, wherever possible. Um, and so it's a, a broad set of data sources um, that is combined to give us a unique and diverse perspective, I guess, on scholarly output and groups. Um, and it's aimed to be um, the world's leading data resource on university performance. So, and currently it has uh, more than 148 million DOIs and trillions of data points. So you can see it, it is quite a large data set that we are working with. And that forms the foundations for the various pieces of other layers of work that we do, including um, the data analysis and uh, writing research articles, blogs, and engage in various conversations at various different levels. Um, and the data is also uh, often used by researchers outside our core group. And another high profile output that we recently um, has put out is the open access dashboard that some of you might be familiar with. And this is um, freely accessible. So um, you simply go to the, the website open.koki.ac and you can explore um, the uh, open access level of institutions and countries um, tracked over time. And how does that all link to um, the, the current work I'm going to talk about? So. Uh, overall, I think the, the goal of our group is that we want to change the stories that the universities tell about themselves, placing open knowledge at the heart of that narrative. Um, and here, open knowledge, uh, we mean that in the widest sense, including open access, open data, citations, diversity, um, knowledge creation, dissemination with the widest possible access as to benefit uh, the broader community and all of humanity. Um, so it's, it's quite a big, uh, I guess, big um, and, and ambitious target. Um, and we advocate for universities as uh, open knowledge institutions. And so what we want to do then is also develop tools and processes um, to help universities and help communities to support that change. And in that process or in the work that we do, um, two phrases that we often talk about is open access and diversity. Um, and Obviously, open access, we all know that means increasing access to research and diversity. Uh, when we talk about diversity, we, I'm referring to uh, evolving and including more people from more groups uh, or people from different groups. Um, and we think of diversity as the foundation or foundational requirements of social knowledge making. Um, and when, when we combine these two, um, that leads us to think a little bit deeper, right? So we have open access and we want more people to, act, to, get, um, to have access to research, but does that actually mean um, we reach out to more of different people or is it just same, the same people from the same groups that are getting uh, more access? 
Um, so if knowledge creation space served through diversity, should that not mean that um, the research is actually disseminated to more diverse groups? So combining those two ideas together, uh, then we ask the question, should, should that not open access not be increasing the diversity of communities that use and benefit from research? But then here comes the next difficulty, how do we actually measure that? So when we talk about um, uh, usage and impact, we often think of citations and uh, we often use citations to, open, uh, to measure usage and impact. Um, and there, there has been claims in over the last um, 20, 30 years that open access has, um, is or is able to attract more citations. Um, uh, obviously, there are various caveats and um, um, special cases um, to be considered. But even if we think of that as um, we're putting those aside, um, is that even the right question to ask? Or should we really ask a different question? And that is, do more people from more places um, um, access the research? So, um, in other words, is it the same same group of people that's been able to get more access, or are we reaching out to um, more of different groups of people from different places? And let's look at, at some data for that. So this is coming out from the Kofi infrastructure, the overall data, and this is global data, which means this includes all the different outputs in our data set. And um, the graph shows that, um, well, we have the four different categories of, um, of outputs. We got the closed outputs, we got the open outputs, um, and we got the gold and the green. Um, and you can see the definitions on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, Obviously, uh, recognizing there are a lot of different variations to these definitions, and but these are the ones we um, are using for this analysis. And what you can see from the graph is that, um, at, at least at a global scale, uh, we can see on average, um, the open access categories are receiving more citations um, than the closed output. Um, the, the, the downward slope is um, a result of earlier publications having had more time to gather citations. So um, they all tend to have obviously higher values. Um, like one interesting thing to note here, you can see green is right on top. Um, and we'll come back to that a um, little bit later in the, in the discussion. And so, uh, sorry, just going back here. So what we're seeing here is that the open access output have more citations over uh, in average on average, but that doesn't tell us who's actually um, who's actually having more access, who's creating the more the, the higher citations, who are who are the people who are citing um, the open access articles, um, and what we want to do is have another way of looking at the citations, and that's what this next picture is is trying to explain. So we have the data now that allows us to dip a little bit deeper right? because um, over the years, the data has developed and there's more links and more information that's now available to us. And the first thing here, what you can do is for each article, we can look at the articles that cite them and we call those the citing articles or the citing papers. But each of those citing papers are linked to the authors and those citing authors are linked to the institutions. And from that link, we can then categorize those citation links into different categories or different groups. For example, we're putting them into um, different institutions, uh, we'll categorize them by countries, categorize them by subregions, regions, and even uh, fields of research. So that's, that's um, we were really excited when we saw this because then that allows us to um, look at um, who's actually citing the articles rather than how many is citing the articles. And um, that means, for example, in this um, the, the diagram on the left-hand side, you see paper A and paper B both have the same amount of citations, two papers that cite them. Um, but then they are linked to different authors or various number of authors and to various number of uh, institutions in different countries. So paper A and paper B, although they have the same amount of citations, paper A is actually cited by more institutions 
which is five, um, compared to paper uh, B. And similarly for paper C and paper D, just, just a bigger um, a scenario with more papers now. Um, you can see that paper C and paper D both have the same amount of citations, but they have different amount of citing institutions, different amount of citing countries. And then we can also calculate uh, using diversity uh, in indices um, to measure diversity uh, by grouping them into those various groups um, that I mentioned earlier. And you can see here, paper C has a, si a higher diversity measure than paper D for both of those diversity measures, which are the Gini Simpsons and the, the Shannon Index. Um, so that allows us now to, um, on large scale, then look at, um, well, not just uh, how many citations, but now look at how many unique citing institutions, how many unique citing countries and so on that um, these publications have. And this particular picture is again um, at a global scale. We see that the open access output have a higher average number of unique citing institutions. And we can do the same thing for um, calculating um, the diversity measure. This is, this, this is one of the diversity measures, the Shannon Index. And you can see again, the open access categories come out on top. And again, noting that green is um, the highest one and we'll come back to that. And of course, these are all just for um, categorizing the citations by institutions, um, these last two diagrams. And we can do that also for categorizing them in different ways, categorizing them or putting them into groups uh, by countries, regions, subregions, and fields. And we see, we see a similar pattern that comes up uh, with open access coming out on top, which means they have more diverse sets uh, of citing countries or citing regions, citing subregions, and citing fields, which is really, really exciting. And um, of course, then the next question is, can we see this uh, pattern consistently throughout? Um, and whether this is all significant. And the first, well, what we realize is the first challenge is that we are dealing with very large data and data that is very unlikely to be normal. Um, so uh, simply calculating p-values aren't going to really help us that much because of the large sample sizes or population sizes, feel like, because you're looking at basically all the cross-ref DOIs. Um, so what we set out to do then as an alternative is there's a, oh, we looked at various other ways of um, trying to understanding whether the pattern is consistent. So we looked at also at um, distributional shift rather than just means and medians. And we do that um, for a large number of scenarios. And so in the publication itself, that paper, um, there's a supplementary file which contains about 127 pages of um, analysis of just graphs and graphs and graphs um, showing that this pattern is really consistent throughout. Well, we tried really hard to find exceptions out of all those hundreds of graphs, and there were really very, very few exceptions to the pattern. So um, that leads us to believe that um, this is a real, uh, uh, a, a real pattern, a real uh, 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 situation where we're seeing that open access outputs are achieving um, more diverse citations than closed output. Um, right, so we know that open access is associated with higher diversity of incoming citations with respect to institutions, countries, subregions, regions, fields for every year from 2010. Um, but one thing that we discovered is that that benefit is not evenly distributed um, across regions, across um, different areas of the places. For example, um, and this these two graphs, are, it's going to be it's going to take a, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to understand them at, at first glance. But what they're recording is really the the change when you move them from closed output to open output. What that change is, and what this is showing is that. Uh, Northern Europe is actually getting bigger benefits in terms of more people citing their work when they make their work open access, plus other areas also citing their work more when they, uh, well, sorry, other people citing their work more when they make it open access, and when other people make their work open access, 
Northern Europe is also citing more other people's work, which is very interesting. And then uh, compared that to Sub-Saharan Africa, the, the, the effect is smaller. So when they make their uh, open, or the outputs open, um, they do get some benefit, but not as great as the North European um, uh, region. So we see that the benefit is um, not even so um, there's still work to do to understand why the, uh, what the difference is, what that difference is and what's driven that difference and whether uh, there are things we could do to support uh, regions where the benefit is smaller. Um, so some of my concluding remarks, so some key takeaways uh, is, well, firstly, what do we mean when we measure, uh, when we are counting, well, what do we mean to measure when we count citations? And isn't measuring the diversity a best, better way of doing that? And that's what we're trying to demonstrate in that, this piece of work. And uh, what we've shown is at a large scale um, and consistent through our different ways of analyzing the data that open access has increased uh, diversity in citations. But recognizing also that some groups benefit from this more than others. Um, and then I would like to just also think about the bigger picture, what this all means. Um, so what we've done is we're taking the usual citation counting and made it into a different type of measure slightly. Um, so I think that leads to uh, also the bigger picture of rethinking and revisiting our core objectives of measuring ma uh, research metrics and what we're we measuring and whether the current metrics that we have are actually doing what we wanted to do, uh, whether we need to uh, revisit some of those uh, things, and um, given the, and of course, given the the advancements of data that we now have, it allows us to dive deeper and potentially more meaningful questions, and therefore maybe uh, new metrics and new ways of understanding metrics and different um, statistics to allow us to um, get better understanding of um, the publishing landscape. Um, and there are the various other works that we are currently involved in at, uh, with the with the Koki team that's also quite interesting um, and that uh, relates to the, um, the data that we now have. We can look at things like authorship diversity and linking that to collaborations and asking questions like with our, not just how much we collaborate, but how diverse are our collaborations and what impact does that have? Does that link to uh, the citation diversity which we've been talking about in this um, presentation? Um, we said diversity is a foundational requirement for social knowledge making. And I would like to link back this now back to the thing we spoke about earlier with green open access sitting on top, um, which is very interesting for me because um, what we see with green open access is that it often doesn't just mean you deposit um, an article into one repository. It, it's often the case that they sit in multiple repositories. And we think that is providing multiple ways or diverse ways of in which people can um, access the research. And therefore that is why it's having a higher impact. So we think, if you think of diversity as a foundation for uh, social knowledge making and thinking about diversity as being in the process of just not, not just knowledge creation, but also knowledge dissemination. Um, so shouldn't we be providing more diverse ways of people where people can access the research. So that's that's a very interesting thing, uh, question that I'll leave you with. Um, and I think, well, for personally, I think uh, green open, open access definitely has its its impact and its benefit, um, which um, we need to um, keep in mind and consider. And there are some useful links in the in the uh, end of the slide. And lastly, just thank you.